Hello everyone, I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. Thank you so much for joining us for this Facebook Live question and answer. Well, hip and knee pain can be debilitating, but many patients choose to just simply live with it to avoid surgery. But joint replacement procedures have certainly come a long way. I'm so happy to be joined live by Dr. Amy Wasterlin. She's an orthopedic surgeon with the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute. Dr. Wasterlin, nice to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, you have a lot of less invasive surgical approaches that you are utilizing with your patients. I want to dive into some of those approaches because, you know, you often hear of people, as we said, they, they live with their joint pain to avoid surgery at all costs, but really surgery has come a long way. So let's talk about some of those less invasive approaches that you're utilizing. Absolutely. So I would just break it down into hip and knee. So for the hip, there's an approach called the anterior approach that has gotten a lot of uh, popularity and press recently. What's so fantastic about it is you can use a really small incision. It's about the width of my hand here um, in the front of the hip. And it allows me to get into the hip and do an entire hip replacement just working around the muscle without uh, getting into the muscle at all. And I would are recovering a lot faster now. I was going to say, I would imagine in the recovery process would be incredibly uh, quicker than typically, whereas if you had to get into the muscle. Yeah, so um, you know, the ultimate outcome in six months or a year is probably roughly the same, but my patients are up and walking the same day. Um, a certain percentage of them are actually going home the same day. And I often hear people coming back in two weeks saying, I'm just shocked and amazed that I don't have pain. So to me and to my patients, it seems like the recovery really is more rapid and just frankly easier. Mm -hmm. and, and let's talk about the knee, uh, some minimally invasive surgical procedures for the knee. Yeah, so I'm really excited. I've been using an approach called the sub approach, which is actually a lot less common than even the anterior approaches in the hip. Um, but what's so unique and special about it is that I scoop underneath the quadricep muscle. So again, just like in the hip, I'm working around the muscle without getting into it at all. So I'm noticing that patients right after surgery are able to pick up their leg and bend and straighten it uh, with dramatically less effort and less discomfort than you know maybe five, 10 years ago. And, and getting their life back has got to be an incredible feeling. And imagine these patients are yeah. living with this pain and, and for you to be able to provide uh, relief and to get them back to their normal activities is, is life changing for these patients. Dr. Wasterling, are there patients that are eligible for this? Who is eligible for these types of minimally invasive procedures? So almost everybody is. Um, we do have some BMI or body mass index uh, thresholds at the hospital. This isn't just me personally, but we as a system try to keep our patients um, as healthy as possible. So if you have a lot of extra obesity, then we try to get your weight down first. Um, so, you know, it is harder to do an anterior or front hip approach if you have a lot of obesity in your abdomen. Um, but really, by far and large, the vast majority of patients that walk into my office qualify and are candidates. Now, I want to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, with respect to me, um, almost everybody is a candidate for the minimally invasive approach. Um, the only challenges are if you have arthritis that's so severe that I need to do uh, you know, a more sophisticated type of uh, design or implant, then I may need to um, go back to my standard approach. And I want to talk about the, the team-oriented approach, this uh, innovative approach, if you will, before and after surgery. I mean, you have a whole team, and it really does take a team to provide this type of care with nurse navigators, physician's assistants. Um, can you walk us through the process of someone coming in for a hip and knee replacement? Walk us through that process. What can they expect? Yeah, so um, I definitely call it a team sport. So surgery is a team sport. Um, the patients get to meet and have a personal nurse navigator who is basically an orthopedic surgery nurse specialist who coaches and guides the patient from the very beginning pre-surgical planning 
um, helping them get set up for any blood work or COVID testing that might be necessary. Um, and then they're there with the patient, uh, you know, remotely there, not physically there, but they're available at all times to help the patient in the recovery process and plan for things like how are they going to get physical therapy after surgery? Do they need a, a nurse or somebody else to help them out at home? Um, so there's a nurse navigator, that person. There's myself and all of my physician assistants, both in the operating room and on the team floor. And then we have a huge staff of highly trained physical therapists, um, orthopedic only nurses. So it's from beginning to end, it's all very um, specialized within orthopedics. Well, you know, you say specialized, but also personalized. I, I like the fact that um, you, you say there are no barriers. You actually even give your cell phone number to patients. Uh, talk yeah. to us a little bit about that, that personalized care, which I think is so important other than the innovative care, but it's that real, real personal touch with your patients. Yeah, um, I will admit that many other surgeons think that I am slightly crazy for <laughs> disseminating my cell phone number, but to me, it's really, really important that my patients feel like there's no barrier to getting in touch with me. Um, so even over this long Labor Day weekend, um, I was texting a few of my patients because they wanted to reach out to me and seek advice. Um, and from my perspective, I would so much rather take the time to be involved in that conversation and to have one of my patients feel stuck or feel like they need to seek care from somebody else over a long weekend. Um, so to me, it's really important to make sure my patients feel like I am totally 100% there for them on their good days and their bad days. Well, I I'm trying to make barriers that way. Absolutely. I would imagine that makes just a huge difference for patients who probably have, have dealt with this pain for so long and are scared to just have the surgery, but knowing that you're going to be there for them 24-7, knowing that they can reach out to you, I would imagine is, uh, is a huge uh, positive influence in, in terms of, of patients and their comfort level and going forward. That is my hope, and so far I've gotten you know really positive feedback from people that are just really grateful to have um, their surgery be available for them. Absolutely. I want to go back to the innovation um, and, and some of the Zoom rounding that you do and, and yeah. some of these different types of techniques that you do with patients. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so of course, you know, we can do the traditional type of rounding where your surgeon comes and visits you. And after I do my surgeries, I always uh, later that day go up to the floor and see all my patients if I can. Um, but sometimes it's really difficult because we cover a huge territory in Connecticut. So um, we have something new that they've just implemented in the past month or so where we can do Zoom rounding. Mm. So basically each patient's uh, hospital room has an iPad already set up and ready to go. So at 6.45 in the morning on Fridays, I log in on my computer, still at home. Sometimes my toddler is crying or <laughs> smiling in the background. <laughs> um, but I can check in with my patients and have a face-to-face -face meeting with them. They can show me their dressing. They can show me that they're standing up and walking. Um, and we can have more of a connection than uh, might otherwise be possible if I was remote. Well, and, and also you, could, you have the potential to reach even more patients that way. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you're right. Within a shorter amount of time, I'm able to, to round on more patients um, at the same time. Dr. Rostellini, you know, we, we've talked about patients being hesitant to come in for surgery because maybe they're, they're afraid of surgery, but with these minimally invasive techniques, it's, there really is no reason not to, to live with the pain, nor should you have to. But there may be some other patients out there still afraid for exposure of COVID to come into the hospital. So I really wanna emphasize the safety of the hospital and the operating room and the measures and the protocols that are in place to ensure patient safety. So can you just touch upon that and a little bit about what you and the team are doing to ensure yeah. patient safety during these times. Yeah, so this has been hugely important throughout our system. So from a patient perspective, um, all patients are tested for COVID before surgery. So if you're coming in for surgery, you have the confidence that, first of all, you've gotten tested and you know that you don't have it, but also you know that every other patient in the hospital with you has also tested negative. So I think that's a huge reassurance. Um, the staff are all 
screened every single day. So I'm not allowed to come to work without checking my own temperature and responding to a whole host of questions. Um, and then, sort of as I mentioned before, we have all of our joint replacement and orthopedic patients on a separate part of the hospital with completely different wings. So there's, you're just not going to be exposed to anybody who has even the tiniest risk of uh, being sick. Yeah, so incredibly important. And are you back up to a full operating schedule as of right now? We are, yeah. So the operating rooms are running full schedule. Um, you know, it's end of summer and everyone's excited now that they've spent their summer and enjoyed it to actually fix the joint problems that they've been having. Yeah, so yeah. I expect fall to be pretty busy for us. I, I was gonna say, you know, in the summer months, people have gotten back to their normal routines and their lives and enjoying the summer, thanks to, to you and your team for uh, for those surgeries. And I, I'd imagine more, many more are scheduled for, for uh, the fall and coming up. Anything you want patients to know in terms of prior to coming in for a procedure, if they are scheduled coming up in the fall months, anything they should know or be aware of before they come in or to make the, their visit a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, my main recommendation is don't wait. You know, come in, come see me. I'm, there are a ton of things that we can do for you before surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and all of this that we're talking about for orthopedics, it's elective. So you are the boss as a patient and I am just here to help offer you um, options and to do a fantastic job for you and your family if you choose to have surgery. Yeah, I mean, in there, you know, surgery is not the end-all be-all. There are other options um, that you do treating more conservative methods before it does get to the point where surgery is the only option, correct? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, I can do other medications we can prescribe, and then there's also cortisone shots. There's, there's, there are a ton of options. So I really like to partner with my patients and, um, like I said, you're the boss as a patient. Well, Dr. Wasterling, thank you so much for joining us. This has been incredibly valuable information. Uh, the, the great work that you're doing and the minimally invasive techniques that you are in getting patients to return to their normal activities and enjoy life once again and for being there for your patients as well. I think that's a huge testament to the type of surgeon that you are, so we thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. You bet. And thank you, of course, for watching. For more information, you can simply log on to ctorthoinstitute.org. I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon and be well.